Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about forehand power. And there are four main power sources on the forehand. Before I get into the technical details of these power sources, I wanna preface this video by saying that power is irrelevant if the forehand does not have control. And it's those players who can combine control with power who have the greatest forehands of all time. Players such as Fernando Gonzalez, Marat Safin, Pete Sampras, James Blake, and of course, the big three, Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer, have amazing forehand that have those characteristics in common. They have incredible control accompanied by incredible power. And the first power source on the forehand is swing momentum. In other words, the racket will pick up momentum as it's going through the swing. And there are some interesting characteristics about this swing momentum. And one is that the racket will actually pick up more momentum if we make a lower contact. So if I feed this ball and I allow the racket to drop lower, the ball will have more power. And the reason for that is simply that the racket will have more range of motion as it's dropping to a lower place. Now, unfortunately, it's not good to hit the ball below your waist because now it's going to be very difficult to get it inside the baseline because we have to hit the ball up. But this is something that you want to keep in mind that you will have more power if the ra racket drops lower. So there's a disadvantage to take the ball higher. You will have less swing momentum when the contact is occurring at your chest height, for example, than at your waist height. So it turns out that the waist height contact point on the forehand is the optimal way to strike the ball when it comes to swing momentum. Guys, another source of power on the forehand is the incoming ball. So we can create a lot more speed on our forehand if we get to use the power from the incoming ball. Now this of course requires good timing. So if the power of the incoming ball overwhelms us, we make big, bad timing, then of course we don't make a lot of power. But if we can time the ball well and redirect this power, we can use the speed of the incoming ball to generate more pace on our forehand. And one example is the fastest forehand of all time hit by James Blake at the US Open, where he basically took a full cut on his forehand return. It was actually on match point and he hit it off a 130 mile an hour serve. And this is recorded as the fastest forehand in the history of the game. So the speed of the incoming ball can help us generate a lot more power on the forehand. And one example I want to show you is what happens when we take the ball in the air versus letting it bounce. Because what happens when the ball hits the ground, the ground actually absorbs a lot of the energy from the ball and reduces the speed. So take a listen to when I hit a forehand out of the air as a swing volley versus a forehand where the ball is bouncing. There's a significant difference in speed and it's simply due to the higher pace of the incoming ball on the swing volley. So you can see that the speed of the incoming ball is a significant factor when it comes to the pace of our forehand. And the reason why I discovered this was sometimes in my lessons, my students would spray the ball long and I would just for fun take a full cut from behind the baseline with a full swing. And I noticed there was probably a five to 10 mile an hour difference versus letting the ball bounce with that same type of swing. And one disclaimer, I don't advise you to start taking full cuts at fast balls a la James Blake because uh, this is most likely gonna go bad because it does require a very fast preparation and incredible timing. But generally speaking, just picture yourself playing against a dinker or a pusher and you have a very hard time generating power. And then when you play someone who hits the ball a little bit harder, a little bit cleaner, you feel like you're playing better. The only reason why this is happening is the pace of the incoming ball is a factor when it comes to the pace of your own shot. And the third power source on the forehand is vertical momentum. So high level forehands will often bend the torso down, creating a V formation between the outside leg or the inside leg in some instances, but the vast majority of the forehands at the high level are struck uh, from the dominant leg. And so the upper body will slightly bend forward in the loading phase. You will see a lot of players slightly go down. And now obviously they're not gonna hit the ball from this position and stay down. This will be very counterintuitive to the swing pass. So naturally what's going to happen as the racket starts hitting the forward phase, the body will start straightening and it's gonna straighten so violently from this vertical momentum that in most of the cases, the non-dominant leg will lift off the ground as a result of it.
And this type of loading on the forehand where we're slightly bending on this side works best on waist height balls. So I encourage you guys to always try to hit the ball at waist height. It is a little bit more challenging to load in this way and then make a little bit higher contact. I made a separate video explaining vertical momentum on the forehand in great detail. And if you're interested, uh, check it out. And this is definitely something that you do want to add to your forehand. And lastly, the most important power source on the forehand is the horizontal rotational momentum which helps us connect the ball to our core and this is how it's going to work we're going to be in a sideways position with a non-dominant hand across the body and now the important part when it comes to the horizontal momentum is that it's going to be initiated prior to the forward phase of the racket so back in the day where players didn't have a loop they would take the racket straight back and now the racket and the torso would rotate together and now as a result of that the contact was made with the shoulders parallel to each other. This is the old school forehand a la John McEnroe or Jimmy Connors. The modern forehand has a torso rotation that leads the way. In other words, the non-dominant arm will start getting out of the way prior to the forward phase. So as the racket is dropping, this arm is gonna start getting out of the way, initiating the rotation of the torso so that when we hit the forward phase, our chest is gonna be pointing towards the ball. So it's a much more open position. As a result of that, now we get to pull with our core towards the ball. We used to continue to rotate and we make contact with the dominant shoulder in front and are able to connect this ball to the core much more compared to the old school forehand. Now, if you're interested in finding out how this works in great detail, check out my video titled The Kinetic Chain on the Forehand. This explains it step by step how this is done. And guys, this rotational momentum is crucial not only when it comes to power, but when it also comes to the control because it can help our swing path. In fact, the vertical and the horizontal momentum can help the modern up across and back swing path because think about it. If we load the body in this way where we're bending slightly down and now we're also going to rotate and straighten at the same time. This happens simultaneously. So are we rotating and straightening? So the body is starting to go up. This will help the racket go up because let's face it, as I said in the beginning of the video, power is irrelevant if it doesn't have control. And this type of setup on the forehand doesn't only help with power but it also helps with control because the upward swing path puts more rotation on the ball and therefore gives us a lot more control so guys it is of the utmost importance that you execute your forehand with the horizontal momentum because as i said it's not only going to help your power but it's also going to help you control and this leads me to the next point which is the most important point control is the most important thing on the forehand you would, shouldn't even worry about your forehand depending on your level so let's say if you're a beginner control and feel of the ball is the most important thing because what will happen on the forehand as you start controlling the ball as you get this happy feeling of the ball going in consistently you're going to trust your forehand more and then as you progress in the stages of tennis your confidence is going to grow and you're going to trust that you can hit the forehand harder without missing it and this is exactly how power should be developed on the forehand or on any other shot in tennis it should happen very gradually and slowly so don't go out there try to hit the ball hard try to rip it this will bring you absolutely nothing what you should do instead is work on your control first make sure the balls are going in and then gradually over time your trust and confidence is going to grow that eventually you can hit your forehand with power and control at the same time 